Creature Campers, The Secret of Shadow Lake, Part 1 of 3. Chapter 1 Hurry up, Norm, called Ma. You don't want to be late for your first day of camp. That was exactly what Norm wanted. In fact, he didn't want to go to camp at all. Norm stared into the bathroom mirror. His belly button stared back at him. He tried to squat down so that he could see his face, but his knees bumped the sink. He still could only see himself from the shoulders down. Stupid growth spurt, he mumbled. It's not like he asked for this body. One day he could walk without tripping over his own feet. And the next day, boom, he was taller than Pa. And he wasn't even a teenager yet. Norm leaned to the left and kicked over the clothes hamper. He leaned to the right and lost his balance, pulling the shower curtain down. He tugged the shower curtain off his head, tripped on the laundry, stumbled over the trash can, and fell back into the bathtub. Everything okay up there? Called Ma. Uh, just combing my hair, Norm said with a high-pitched squeak. Even his voice was determined to make his life miserable. He sat in the empty tub and pulled a very big comb across the tops of his enormous furry feet. That's my boy, said Pa, popping into the bathroom. Big shoes to fill. Get it? Because you're a Bigfoot? Norm groaned. What's with the attitude? said Pa. When I was your age. I know, Pa, I know, said Norm. I should be super excited that you're sending me to Camp Moonlight. You had to beg Graham and Pop Pop to go. Norm pulled the corners of his mouth into a big grin. See? Super excited. Pa crossed his arms over his hairy chest. Oh yeah, I can feel the excitement. Maybe it's just not for me, said Norm. What are you worried about? That I won't fit in, said Norm. I barely fit in this bathroom. I'll be taller than all of the other campers, and hairier, and my feet are enormous. You're a big foot, said Pa. Not a small foot. Your size is perfectly normal. Besides, you know what they say at Camp Moonlight? Being different is not unusual. It's unusual. Norm rolled his eyes. If there was a prize for dorkiest camp motto, Camp Moonlight would be the winner. Just give it a chance, said Pa. On one condition, said Norm. Pa arched an eyebrow. Help me out of this tub? I think I'm stuck. Chapter 2 Here we are, said Pa. Camp Moonlight. Ma clapped her hands together. Oh, the memories, she sighed. Uh, where's the camp? Asked Norm. All I see are the same woods we've been trekking through for the last four hours. You're looking right at it, said Pa. He winked at Norm. Ma giggled. Right. Norm folded his lanky arms across his chest. Can we go home now? Welcome to Camp Moonlight, said a gruff voice. Norm jumped back, almost knocking Ma and Pa over. Whoa, did you hear that? said Norm. That tree stump is talking. I am not a stump, said the gruff voice. A very small, very grumpy gnome in a patchwork cap emerged from behind the stump. I'm your camp director, Furrow Grumplestick, he said. He lifted up a clipboard bigger than himself and ran his pencil down the list. You must be ginormous, Pa said. Grumplestick surveyed Norm from head to toe. Yes, yes you are, he said. No, that's my name, said Norm. Ginormous Strider, but everyone calls me Norm. Grumplestick scratched his eyebrow with his pencil. Norm it is. Can someone please explain why I don't see a camp? Said Norm. Where are the cabins? Where is the dining hall? Where are all the other campers? Grumplestick pushed his cap back with his pencil. You ask a lot of questions. He chewed on his eraser a moment and then scribbled something on the paper attached to his clipboard. What are you writing? Asked Norm. Is that about me? Grumplestick ignored Norm's question while continuing to scribble. Ah. Here comes another camper now, said Grumplestick. It took Norm a second to figure out what he was looking at. This skinny creature was taller than Grumplestick, but not by much. It had no fur, no tail, no wings. Its teeth weren't even pointy. It was a human. Oliver Fitzpatrick, said Grumplestick. 
He checked his name off the list. Welcome to Camp Moonlight. Thanks, squeaked Oliver, who stood in the middle of a pair of sturdy-looking forest rangers like a pebble between two boulders. Oliver's gaze was fixed on Norm. Don't stare, said Oliver's mom. It's not polite. You're going to be campmates, said Oliver's dad. He grabbed Oliver's shoulder and gave it a playful shake. I bet you two will be best of friends in no time. When his dad let go, Oliver dizzily stumbled forward. Norm put out his hand to stop him from falling face first into his fur. See, said Oliver's dad, friends already. I think we're at the wrong camp, squeaked Oliver. Grumplestick scrunched his eyebrows together and checked his list again. Nope, you're right here on my list, Oliver Fitzpatrick. Oliver gulped. But I'm a human. Yep, that's what's on my list, said Grumplestick. Oliver Fitzpatrick, human. Are there other humans? Oliver asked. Grumplestick scratched his patchwork cap with his pencil before running down the list. Let's see. Centaur, pixie, jackalope, blah, blah, moth boy, unicorn, chupacabra, blah, 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 goblin, gremlin, mermaid. Nope, you're it. Norm cleared his throat and gave Oliver a big toothy smile. If it makes you feel any better, I'm pretty sure I'm the only Bigfoot here. Oliver gulped. You're not gonna eat me, right? Norm quickly pressed his lips together. Eat him? Maybe next time he should show less teeth. Meanwhile, what Norm didn't know was that someone was watching them from the tippy top of a towering tree. That someone was none other than the world-famous collector of rare creatures, the curator of curiosities, the connoisseur of cryptozoology. <clears throat> Can you get on with it, please? Yes, of course, that someone was none other than Barnaby Snoop. Barnaby sneered. A Bigfoot will be the perfect contribution to my collection. Nothing will keep me from capturing you for my carnival of creatures. Nothing. Barnaby looked down at the ground, so very far below him. Except for getting out of this tree, he said. It's really quite scary up here. He twisted the ends of his mustache. But after that... Nothing will get in my way. Chapter 3 All right, campers, said Grumplestick. Follow me. Where exactly are we going? Oliver squeaked. Norm followed the clipboard-clutching gnome. I don't see any... Wow! As they passed between two towering pine trees, the forest was suddenly gone. Well, not completely gone. It was still all around them, on the outskirts of Camp Moonlight. But now there were tents and cabins of different shapes and sizes. In the center of the clearing stood a pole, even taller than Norm, with a Camp Moonlight flag gently flapping in the breeze. Fairy magic, Grumplestick grunted. Keeps camp a secret. At the entrance to camp, a large wooden sign read, Welcome to Camp Moonlight, where being different is not unusual, it's fun usual. Oliver snickered. That's not even a real word. Fun usual? Norm grinned, doing his best to not look like he wanted to eat Oliver. He didn't want to eat anybody, but he could go for a nice bowl of berry casserole. Norm's stomach growled so loudly that Oliver jumped. Don't eat me, said Oliver. Will you quit it? Norm whispered. Grumplestick went on and on, doing a lot of pointing with his clipboard. And that's the dining hall with the red log roof, finished Grumplestick. Where they serve the best berry casserole, said a voice from right behind them. Oliver shrieked and jumped closer to Norm. A slender gray creature with a big oval head and peanut-shaped pupils stood watching them. She had three very, very long fingers on each hand that were currently pressed together and patiently tapping. She did not look amused. I am Xenomorph, your counselor, she said. I came from... Outer space, said Oliver. No, Xena said. From my cabin, the one right next to yours. Norman Oliver followed Xena's long gray arm and long gray finger. It pointed to one of several cabins with a four painted on the door. Xena opened the screen door and led Norman Oliver inside. These are your campmates. A brown rabbit with long antlers on her head, raced around Norman Oliver, stopping between her rapid questions to look them up and down or thump her foot. 
Hey there, wow, you're big, like really big and furry, lots of fur, so much fur, but not you, you're small, you don't have any fur, why don't you have any fur? Did you shed your fur? Did you ever have fur? This is Hazel, said Zena. She'll be staying in the cabin with the other girl campers. Hazel, that's me, she said. I'm a jackalope, ever heard of a jackalope? Part jackrabbit, part antelope, a jackalope. She leaned in close to Norman Oliver and whispered, I also might be part raccoon on my mother's side. She eventually stops talking said a boy with pointed ears poking out from under a mop of blue hair. He had wings on his back, and Norm couldn't help but notice that one was much smaller than the other. I'm Wisp. I took a bottom bunk. Is that cool? I kind of have trouble reaching high places. He closed his eyes, squeezed his fists, and fluttered his wings. He managed to lift a couple of inches off the ground, but no higher. That little wing just couldn't do it. One of these days, he sighed. Hey, that was pretty good, said Norm. Your feet weren't touching the ground at all. I have feet, said Hazel. Two feet, two big feet, not as big as your feet. Big feet, hey, are you a Bigfoot? Zena sighed. We will begin our first activity bright and early tomorrow morning. What will we be doing, asked Norm. Canoe skills, Zena said. All first-time campers are taught basic canoe skills. Norm's stomach dropped. How was he going to fit in a canoe? He wasn't even sure he would fit in the bunk bed. On the lake, Oliver gulped. No, said Zena on top of the trees. Oh, good, said Hazel. Glad it's not the lake. I don't want to get my fur wet. Do you know how long it takes to dry? A long time. And my antlers are top heavy. They might tip. I'll tip. I might tip the canoe right over and then splash. Of course the lake, Zena said, burying her face in her hands. Why would you canoe on top of... Never mind. You should all get some rest. We have a long day tomorrow, and the earlier we get started, the better. Why is it better? Asked Oliver. The less chance we have of disturbing the lake monster, said Zena. Norm's eyes opened wide. Oliver's jaw dropped. Wisp's wings fluttered. Hazel rapidly thumped her foot. Did she? Norm said. Just say, Wisp said. Lake, said Hazel. Monster, finished Oliver. Meanwhile, a lake monster, eh? Said Barnaby Snoop. He was hiding behind a tree close to cabin four and listening to every word. He raised his left eyebrow, and then his right, and then he chuckled. If it's a lake monster they expect, then it's a lake monster they'll get. I have just the plan. To be continued in part two.